Welcome to the Hansa Talks, Hansa University of Applied Sciences podcast series. We're committed to supporting our current and prospective international students in their study choice, study success, and career development. We're talking with our students, teachers, researchers, alumni, and professionals. Follow us on Spotify and YouTube and visit our website, hansa.nl. Welcome, dear yeah, viewer or dear listener, to the Hansa Mythbusters. Uh, let's bust some engineering myths here today. Well, welcome. My name is Jacqueline. I'm the host for today. I am an alumna from the Hansa University of Applied Sciences, and I've been working for the past few years in the tech, energy, and just engineering sector as a communication specialist. And today I'm here to bust some myths about yeah, the different study programs we have here at the Hansa, uh, looking more directly into mechanical versus electrical engineering, and yeah, just what you can do overall here. And for that, obviously, I need to have some experts. So I got myself three special guests. Say hello, guys. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> thanks so much for joining me. I have here Emilio, Zoe, and Nabot. And we're just going to talk a bit more about... Yeah, just your guys' studies, and I guess first you can introduce yourself. I can. I think we can start from Emilio's side and go through. So great. Well, my name is Emilio Munoz. I am a 24-year-old student from Mexico, and yeah, I'm in my first year of the mechanical engineering bachelor. Okay, nice. My name is Zoe. Uh, I come from Greece and Italy, and I, it's my first year here at Hansa, and I also study mechanical engineering, like Emilio. Hi, my name is Navot. I'm studying electrical engineering. And I come from Sri Lanka. So a lot of internationals here in the room. This is nice. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's how d- I mean, that's also the first question I would actually have. How did you guys get to yeah come to Groningen to study engineering? I mean, how was the process? I know that, Emilia, you were already previously studying in Mexico. True that. Yeah, I actually did three out of five years of mechatronic engineering in Mexico. Had to quit to COVID, though. So uh, when I had to start again, um, I was looking, uh, I thought like, okay, why not try in Europe? Yeah. So I started my search for university, found Hanse, uh, really liked the program, um, did my search, uh, and I thought it was a, yeah, the, a good match for me, oh. and decided to come here. Yeah. What about you, Zoe? Was it similar? Yeah, <laughs> um, not really. Uh, I finished high school, well, right after finishing high school, I did my research on different universities, because I hadn't yet decided if I wanted to stay back home or uh, go somewhere else and then I researched Hansa and found out more about it and I thought it was very interesting and that's how I applied. Yeah also your sister uh, is or was studying previously at the RUG so at the yeah, yeah. Rijksuniversiteit. Yeah she's currently studying uh, at RUG and um, well the decision was a bit weird because she was the one that first decided to come here to the Netherlands to yeah. study and then she kind of pushed me and was like, you should research it. And <laughs> it's really interesting. And so I did my research uh, on my own. And uh, I preferred Hansa for reasons that uh, I guess we're going to talk about later. Or yeah, I mean, you can or now. <laughs> how so? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I like the applied part of Hansa. So since I wanted to study mechanical engineering as mm-hmm. well, which is something more practical, I think, uh, I thought it was the best choice. Yeah. That makes sense. And what about you? Well, um, it, it's a kind. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I just uh, picked Netherlands out the map. I was like, hmm, kind of interesting. Let me just check it out. So I was like, mm, let me just get out of my comfort zones and uh, try this country out. And so far, it's, it's been a very nice experience. Yeah, I'm loving it here. I love how you're like just choosing like the smallest country, kind of just like pointing it out in Europe. <laughs> well, I mean, the plan was to go to Germany at first. But then Corona happened, and I was like, mm, not really worth it. Yeah. So let's try Netherlands out. Yeah. And here I am. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, I also feel like um, the study programs in the Netherlands offer also way more English-speaking content and, like, English-speaking studies. So it's way easier to get into it rather than having to obtain first, like, a certain degree of yeah, German skills in that case, if you study in Germany. Yeah, that yeah. is very true, because uh, I think most German universities do require German and in here, it's not really the case because everyone speaks English. Yeah. And you have everything in English, so which is amazing. Yeah, nice. So I think I want to like first start a bit to explore with you guys about mechanical engineering. 
I know that you guys are both in the first year out of three, so you have the short track of mechanical engineering. Can you give me a bit of a rundown? How does it look like? Like you start, what different courses do you have? Like what do you do in the different years? Yeah. Well, I think that uh, the first semester, uh, all the courses we have had uh, and that we have each semester had to do uh, with a project, a final project that englobes all the all the courses that we take in each semester. So for example, last semester we did a project called Project Prototype. Yeah. where we had to come up with an idea and, uh, and, a, and a problem and mm -hmm. we have to make a product to solve that problem. My team, for example, did an electric bike rack so that you could put on top of the car, but instead of hopping the car on top, you would actually make the rack go down, slide the bike in and put it on top. Um, cool. And all the classes that we had were related um, to this project. So, for example, we had electrical drives in order to know um, which motor we needed to use for this uh, for this product and stuff like that. So, uh, so I get that the way it works. You have a like a main project each semester, and the course that you have in this semester helps you uh, make the project and yeah. finalize it. So it was pretty good. I like it. Nice. And so, do you know already what expects you in the second and third year? Uh, yeah, sort of. We do. Um, we don't have a like the best picture yet of mm -hmm. what to expect. But we do know some stuff. So like next year, again, we have uh, a project uh, in which we're going to be working with a company. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we're going to have an actual client. And that's important that we do our work uh, right. Yeah. And that makes it also, I think, more exciting as well. Um, and then we're also, and during the third year, I think we have to do either an internship or choose a minor. Yeah. Uh, here at Hanze and there are plenty of options as well. I think there is also an energy technology minor mm -hmm. uh, or biomedical engineering. So some interesting stuff that cool. we can choose. Yeah, it's a very versatile, like you can really yeah. form your own path where you want to go to. Yeah, it is very versatile. And yeah, our teachers also help out with uh, deciding uh, what we want to do later on. Yeah. And what is so far you would say, like what is your most favorite and your least favorite subject? My least favorite is calculus. Will always be calculus. <laughs> it was my least favorite subject in Mexico, and it's still my least favorite subject in the Netherlands. And it will always be my least favorite. And I think that my favorite so far uh, has been. Um, and I don't know if it's because I got a very good grade on it, but it has been fluid dynamics. So, uh, <laughs> so I mean, I, I do enjoy that one. I enjoy thermodynamics as well. Um, but um, but yeah, definitely calculus is the list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for <laughs> me, <Same> for you. <laughs> it's calculus too. I have to say that um, not a fan of math at all. <laughs> so um, that shows you can do engineering and not yes. be a fan of, Actually, <laughs> of math. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and then my favorite, I would say, it's probably mm, I'm not sure thermodynamics, maybe, uh, which we just wrote an exam <laughs> on so yeah did it go well like yeah so? i th yeah. think it went well i would say yeah. so yeah nice yeah. <laughs> that's cool and like listening to it Navot, like how can you compare it to electrical and electronics engineering well um the first year you're studying electronics but however in the second year you get to choose either mechatronics electronics or sensor technologies yeah um courses obviously we study math as well uh it's calculus but we, we call it applied mathematics and I'm so far enjoying it. I don't know what about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's so fun <laughs> studying math. Come on. Um, but yeah, uh, we studied math. We had applied physics, um, electronics, and a bit more programming as well. Yeah. It sounds like, how would you consider your flexibility on like uh, your study from like one to ten? Uh, like ten being the most flexible with like choosing your courses and one being like not at all very static. Like what would you say? Or what is it for electronics, let's say? I would say a nine. A oh, solid okay. nine. Nice. Because, uh, yeah, everything's detailed out for you. I think they recently restructured the course for this year. Mm -hmm. So everything's a lot better than compared to previous years. Yeah. And, yeah. Nice. Yeah, they really, like, found a way to take all the feedback and just kind of improve the study as well. Oh, nice. And what about you guys? What would you give the grade um, for, like, one to ten? Yeah. Maybe not as high as yeah. electrical engineering because, uh, I mean, for example, from what Nabot said, uh, you can either go to mechatronics or choose other like directions from the same career. Yeah. Whether as for us, uh, I think it's a little bit more limited. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, I think that if you're in mechanical engineering, it's pretty much because you love it. Yeah. So uh, you have no doubt about it. But um, uh, definitely a little bit less flexible than electrical engineering, but pretty flexible, though. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we can pick some electives during the second year. Yeah. So we're going to do that probably next year. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's as flexible as electrical. Yeah. But it's what Amelia said that you picked it because you like it. So I don't think it's a problem. Yeah. No, definitely. I think it also depends on like the person you are, what you enjoy doing. So you can choose something that's a bit more flexible where you feel like you really want to like explore different options or you choose for something that is more like, okay, I really want to do mechanical. I really want to go into that direction. It's a bit more like, I also remember when I started studying communication, which is something completely different. Then I was also very interested in the fact that the study was just like meant to be those four years and you have those courses that you have to take. I really liked that because I didn't have to think about it. I was just enjoying studying and learning different things. So, but then I also know other people really much enjoy actually taking their own path and saying, okay, every year I want to know exactly what courses I take and I want to decide myself. So, yeah, makes sense. Is there like anything that you guys feel like people think or like any myths and cliches that people have of uh, engineering studies that are actually not true at all? Maybe regarding math. I mean, uh, yeah. as we said, <laughs> we're not big calculus fans. Maybe not about is, but, uh, uh, but uh, I think that he's great at it, so... I think that you are also like whatever you're good at, yeah. but uh, I'm not great at calculus, and I think that's one of the myths. You don't have to be amazingly good at math in order to be an engineer. Yeah. Um, of course, you're gonna have a lot of them, but uh, it, it's not all around math. I mean, I think that engineering is way more than math. Yeah. So uh, if math is not your like strongest point, doesn't really matter because uh, it, it's not gonna be something that's gonna stop you uh, on being a good engineer. Yeah. So that one myth already. Mm -hmm. Like y you, you guys kind of busted in a way, but you also kind of confirm it. So it's actually quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? I was like, what is something that you and see also with maybe electronics specifically? Mm, people think that engineering is very hard compared to other, like other majors, like theory based stuff. Mm. But I personally think it's the way you study. Like if you know how to handle your workload, then you're good to go. Just yeah, come back home and do your research and just study. Yeah. Basically that. Is there any like time to do things outside of your studies? Do you do any other projects like Zoe, for yeah, example? Yeah, definitely. I think that's another myth that you yeah. don't have free time at all. But I think that's completely wrong because you do have a lot of free time. Uh, you can go out with friends or do sports uh, at ACLO, for example. That's the uh, association with different sports you can mm -hmm. pick and choose. Uh And there is also, um, you can have like your hobbies, uh, art, theater, whatever you like to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you enjoy? Do you do anything outside of school? Like yeah. associations wise? <laughs> yeah, uh, I like to draw. So oh, I'm not nice. part of an association, uh, but I do that during my free time on my own. So that's nice. What about you, Emilio? I already hear we were talking about earlier, like you're doing a lot of stuff. I, mean, I think <laughs> that you can make it as, uh, as, um, as more... Um, Uh, yeah, as busy as you want. Uh, I love taking part of different teams and associations. So I'm sometimes a little bit busy. Plus, uh, I'm I have a second job. Um, so well, a part time job. Sorry. So uh, so yeah. But um, the workload that I have at university is not as uh, hard, so that I cannot do other things. Yeah. So I think that with good organization skills, I mean, I can have university uh, and work and social life pretty well balanced. Yeah. Managed to do all. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, what about you? What's, what are you doing outside of school if we don't see you studying in the study halls? <laughs> no, um, actually, right now, I have a lot of free time. So at the moment, I'm still figuring things out. Like, maybe I could do a bit of work, like work somewhere in here. Or do some sports or play some instruments. But yeah, actually, right now, I'm playing an instrument. And uh, oh, nice. it's going well. So in my free time, I'm playing an instrument. Which one? I'm playing the bass, the bass guitar. Cool. Nice. nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that's also some uh, a myth that I encountered when I was uh, in the Top Dutch Solar Racing. Uh, so it's like a student team that builds uh, a solar car for challenges. And there, a lot of, like, I had the feeling that, or I thought first before I met the people, like, oh, engineers are very socially awkward. So it's like, that they're, they, that they're awkward. And I guess to a degree it's maybe right, but I, I guess you uh, talking to you guys, I think we can disprove that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, because it's like, I think also in a lot of uh, terms, you need to also have a lot of social skills if you, like, work with people as well, right? Like, if you 
do also you were saying projects together so like with the electric bike uh, rack and everything right so is that also something that you feel like you're learning in uh, school as well like social skills or is it just really practical from your side um, yeah, we do learn some soft skills. Um, there are some classes in the engineering that are called professional skills. So that helps us with presentations, um, how to perform if you have to uh, present your product or uh, write a report and things like that and come in contact with your client as well. Uh, so that's also very important to have those soft skills to be able to eventually uh, showcase your product and yeah. what you've built. True. Makes sense. Is it the same then also in uh, electronics and electrical engineering? Well, yeah, um, as Sui mentioned, uh, we do focus a lot on communication as well. Mm -hmm. But we have a course called Power Up Yourself, where you can work on stuff like technical drawing or SolidWorks and basic math skills. They focus a lot on that as well. So basically, you can earn a bit of credits from that and along with some communication skills, which is perfect for your degree and uh, social life. Mm -hmm. Nice. And looking at, I mean, you guys have all, all started in the first year, right? So I guess it's probably too much to ask her, but do you already have an idea of like what you want to do afterwards? Uh, maybe the field you would like to work in? Did you already get some little inspiration? I mean, um, I think that I have a pretty clear idea of what I want to focus my career on. Uh, and I'm like doing a little bit extra in order to do that. Uh, I want to um, specialize on the design for circular economy. So, um, yeah, I think that is one of the branches from uh, from engineering or from mechanical engineering where I can actually be a professional. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think that's what I want to do afterwards, uh, focus on the circular economy, but uh, in, the, in the engineering part of the circular economy. So uh, that's the focus I want to give it to my career. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, it might be a, an early stage to do it, but I think that um, it's nice to do it yeah. like, since now. And you're saying you're taking extra steps, so what do you mean with it? Like, are you doing extra activities or...? Or yeah, something. well, um, I I'm usually taking part of uh, many like sustainable challenges. Not all of them are related to the circular economy, but I think that uh, in order to be good at it, you have to be uh, like around everything that englobes the circular economy. So policy making, stuff like that. Not only the mechanical part, uh, but uh, I've also taken some courses from University of Delft. Mm, uh, nice. So um, I think so far I have four from Delft. Yeah. So, um, yes, just to like keep learning about the topic and actually get good at it. Cool. And why did you then, for example, I mean, Delft is a technical university. Why did you then decide to go to Groningen and not to, to Delft for studying? I actually did look into Delft. However, um, I saw that the course that I was interested in was in Dutch. Oh. Uh, really? So, yeah, and I, did, I couldn't manage to learn Dutch that fast in order yeah. to, to enroll. But, um, but uh, I mean, I like the university. But um, also I think something that Zoe mentioned is that uh, I like the approach of Hanse. The fact mm -hmm. that it's uh, an applied science university. The university where I was uh, before in Mexico, where I did three years of mechatronics, was a research university. Mm -hmm. And um, I never touched a single workshop or an engineering lab. So everything oh, wow. was uh, theoretical. It was a lot of research. I mean, I knew how to apply every formula, how to do great research, but uh, I was not using my hands into building anything. And I think that part of being an engineer is that you like building stuff. You like yeah. uh, knowing how things work, making things work, repairing stuff. At least that's my approach on uh, yeah. what I like. So um, uh, I think that that was another, uh, uh, another thing of why I chose ANSE for being an applied science university, mm -hmm. uh, because I also have experience from a research university, which, uh, I mean, was okay. It was very specialized, but yeah. um, but not really what was helping me in particular. Yeah, so, so it's um, nice that you found your way through that, basically. That's uh, yeah. like kind of trial and error, and then that you now have like in Groningen, you say, okay, this is like the place to be. This is what yeah. I want to do. <laughs> I mean, it was pure luck because of COVID, but... Uh, but that's yeah. how most things work, and I'm exactly. Opinion, at least. You don't so have to plan you anything. just like go with the <laughs> flow, so that it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and what about you, Zoe? Do you already know what you uh, want to do afterwards? Not really. I don't have a clear idea yet. Uh, just because I'm still, I still have a lot of courses to go through. Of course, yeah. like everybody else here, since we're first years. But um, I think because I like drawing so much and I enjoy it, probably something to do with design. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Cool. True. The combining your hobby together with kind of yes. this like technical <laughs> side of your brain. That's yeah, because cool. uh, engineering is not only uh, practicals and maths and all that. It's also creative. So yeah, I think that was uh, also what uh, Tondo said in one of the MythBuster 
episodes as well is that there's a lot of creativity involved and actually yeah engineering something especially if it needs to be new or something yeah so definitely yeah. yeah you're using both of your brain halves right <laughs> 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 what about you though what do you know it already mm, not really because uh before i came to netherlands i really wanted to do mechanical so when i got accepted to electrically i was like Mm, I'm going to switch to mechanical. And the funny thing is whenever I see Amelia, I'll be like, "Bro, bro, how is your degree? How is everything going? Yeah. Could you explain this and that to me?" So, during the first semester, I was like, mm, "I really want to switch to mechanical." Mm. But as the time went by, I'm really enjoying electronics. And next year I have the choice to, you know, choose mechatronics as well. Yeah. So, I'm like, mm, "Mechanical ele- and electronics. So, why not both?" So, Still, I'm figuring things out. So maybe next year I'm going to be doing mechatronics, and uh, we'll see what what the job field will look like for me. Yeah. But I really like practical work, so that's one. I, that's something I really want to do in the future. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think that's uh, interesting as well because I also observe it like working more in the tech field that in smaller companies it's really nice to have like the mechatronic side of it because you have people who kind of understand how both things work, how both sides complement each other, and then usually if it's becoming more corporate, you have like I don't know hundreds of people who work in a company, then it's nice to specialize more. So then you can go more into a little detail of mechanical engineering, like, I don't know, drive trains or something, or uh, more into electrical engineering or like software, like a specific part of it. It's always, yeah, it, it, you always have like somewhere your, your kind of thing. So who knows, maybe I'll see you in like a smaller startup or something during mm. mechatronics. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Nice. You were also talking about uh, that you're like, when you talk with Emilio also, that you're interested in whatever he's doing and stuff. Like, whatever thing interests you about mechanical? Like, I was so curious. No, because for electrical engineering, in your first year, you're going to have two projects. And during the first semester, we have circuit analysis and digital electronics as well, which are both practical. But for circuit analysis, we do have a theory exam. So is it the same case for you? Do you have like a lot of practical exams and uh, labs and sort of stuff? I mean, we did in the first project, uh, which is what the project prototype that I mentioned earlier, but um, um, we have recent exams for every course. So yeah. uh, we don't have any course that is graded based on a project other than the main project. Yeah, and uh, most of the exams, I would say, are uh, calculations mainly, not so much theory, but there are some theoretical ones. Like during the first semester, we had most of the more theoretical exams, but it's usually mostly calculations and problem solving. Mm-hmm. Maybe we have only had like three courses with theory, right? I think it was yeah, materials yeah. engineering and um, and design, engineering design. Yeah, probably w- some of the first semester. Mm-hmm. How would you, because, yeah, you guys were also mentioning you work a lot with projects, so you also have, like, a new third year, you're going more practical as well. How is it uh, then with electronics? What, how, what would you say, like, percentage-wise? How much do you work practically? How much is the theory? I know you enjoy the theory a lot, so... Well, I did A-levels, like, international yeah. A-levels, so it's a lot more theory than practicals. We never really had practices for A-levels, so I'm not yeah. really used to practicals. When I first came here, in the first block, we had circuits analysis, which is theory, which is theory and pra- uh, practicals. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, it's 50-50. You need to pass practical and both theory to get the final grade. Yeah. And uh, however, for, for digital electronics, you don't really have theory exams. You do need to learn about like Boolean algebra and stuff like that. But at the end, it's a pra- practical exam. Mm-hmm. So I would say it's just a combination between theory and practicals. Yeah. But I, ju- I do want to mention that the teachers and teachers assistants are really helpful oh. they will help you out with everything and yeah basically that nice. so it's easy to pass practicals but theory you do need to put in your work yeah yeah i also feel like with the with teachers it's really nice uh that a lot of them have also worked previously in like a practical field or are coming from that background so you can really say like, okay like they can help you with kind of uh evaluating and uh just seeing also where your path is and how you're doing, where to improve. It's really nice. All right. I actually have a few questions for you guys that we got asked by some Instagram followers. Uh, So I will just straightforward ask them. And I'm also curious because I actually also don't know the answer. So (laughs) first question was, what's the lab situation here at Hansa? Uh, Okay. (laughs) Uh, We have uh, two 
different labs here, mainly for the mechanical engineering, of course. Uh, it's a makerspace uh, in which you can come here on your own and work on your personal projects, but mm -hmm. also on school projects. There are 3D printers and laser cutters as well. And then there is the main mechanical engineering lab, let's say, um, that you have a lot more serious uh, machines, like yeah. drill ma drilling machines and uh, other stuff. So. All right. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, sorry. I mean, sorry, yeah, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, like, in my opinion, I think that Hans is, like, an uh, engineering's paradise if we uh, yes. if t talking about, like, for example, the makerspace on the workshop. Yeah. Because you can pretty much come here, get all the assistance you need. You can do your personal projects. And uh, it could be either in the makerspace or either mm -hmm. in the one that Zoe mentioned, the, the actual um, workshop for mechanical engineering. And there will always be teachers willing to help. And I think it's just great. Yeah. Nice. Is uh, the maker space or like the uh, things that they're mentioning right now, like all the rooms also for uh, then the electronic study? Or do you guys have some extra special things? Mm, well, it's the same case for electrical engineering. Yeah. You, But you do have like two electrical labs and then the maker space as well. But I did hear that in a different city, not too far away, there's a huge hunter facility for electrical engineering students. And you have all these labs and all these equipments like 3D printers and everything you need. You can find that. Nice. So, as Emilia said, it could be paradise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're also, for the people who watch us, who watch the video, like, we are also having in the background some part of the makerspace as well with a lot of, like, 3D printed stuff. So, it's also really cool to, like, check out what everyone is doing once in a while. It's quite interesting. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, guys, for telling me a bit more about mechanical engineering and electrical and electronics engineering. I think it was really interesting to see kind of a bit the differences what you guys are working on but also kind of how it all comes back to you know just doing fun stuff in engineering sounds really cool and it's also very practical focus so thanks a lot yeah, thank, thank you, you. <laughs> i hope you enjoyed it <laughs> and also thanks for our listeners and our watchers and uh, if you have any questions, obviously, feel free to ask us. Maybe there are some more myths that want to be busted. And uh, don't forget to check out our second episode that's coming up soon, which will be mostly focused on the job market. So we're going to look more into what you can actually do with those degrees that you're obtaining in a few years. So, yeah, hope to see you there.